Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your weekly astrology horoscope. This is the peace dealer. And I hope you're getting the utmost quality from this report. You know what that just reminded me of right now? Uh, Superman is a solar being. And even though Superman is Clark Kent, when he gets in that booth, he becomes Superman. And so when I get on this chair, you know what I'm saying? The world knows me as, you know, Michael. I'm just some random loser on the internet. But when I sit in this chair and I'm ready to talk about these transits, I become the peace dealer. And no one knows the supernatural work that is. And I don't care if people think I'm just some loser. I'm the motherfucking peace dealer. And uh, the courage and confidence to express that is all the other. So anyway, I know a lot of people have been wanting me to break down the lion's gate and to explain it, but you guys don't need to ex you guys don't need to be explained the lion's gate. You need to experience lion's gate because I can explain the lion's gate for you, but the lion's gate is involving Aries, which is individual, and it's involving Uranus and Taurus, which is unique. And so everything that I tell you about Lionsgate is not going to align with your personal experience of this. And so, yes, it's good to get insight, but you need to be your own authority here because the way this is going to impact everyone is literally unique to you. So you see this right here, 28 degrees Aries, where we are right now, right now this week is very important because if you've heard me say many times, we have gone through the gauntlet. Let's go back in time when the moon entered Capricorn. And so based on Leo season, whenever I say we're in the gauntlet, it's when the moon is getting ready to go through Capricorn into Cancer because it's going through all these energies. Look, it's going to go through, it's gone through Jupiter, Pluto, and, and, and Saturn. It's gone through Pisces with Neptune. And then it's gone through Chiron. And it's gone through Mars. And right now, as we can see, it's getting ready to go to Uranus. Why is this important? These lunar aspects, the moon, is now aspects that initiate conjunctions, which initiate monthly cycles, which now represent, based on this awareness of abilities and power that's awakening, the moon represents our real-time dynamics with these reinforcing mechanisms so that every month we awaken more and more exponentially. And so this is the first time in the gauntlet where now we have energy in Cancer because it was all in Gemini. And so this is the first time we're going to Cancer and then Leo. The gauntlet's ending at Leo as opposed to ending at Gemini, which means that this awakening is going to become out more fuller and the reason why I keep talking about superpowers awakening is because the, the full, regardless of everything you're seeing on the news, regardless of everything that's happening in your life, Pluto in Capricorn since 2008, Saturn in Capricorn since 2017, and Jupiter in Capricorn since 2020 is all about one thing, the great awakening. Like, think about, like, I want, <laughs> I want you to just notice this week, everything in your awareness and everything you're being told. How many people are talking to you about the great awakening? And this is in Capricorn, your body, the great physiological awakening of your lifetime. Mind, body, spirit. How many people are talking about that? And I don't mean people who do what we do. How many serious, real, how many serious, real people, all right, in real professions are talking about the one thing that matters? And why are they talking about everything else but the genetic evolution of your being and potential. That is what this is about. That's why I keep talking about superpowers, superpowers, superpowers. This is what this is about. Everything is based on Pluto and Capricorn. The destruction of this traditional system to transform it, all right? The Pluto return of America and the definitive evolution, Jupiter transformation, Pluto, and mastery of your physical self. And so this week is the Lion's Gate week in that we actually activate the Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, four months of work we've done into Power Ranger, the fifth one. You're right, you all about to become the Red Ranger, okay? <laughs> this week, you're about to put on your goddamn power suit. And the, the, the purpose of this week is physiological transformations that bring greater strength, like Sailor Moon, like Power Rangers, like Super Saiyan. And so 
let's talk about how seemingly crazy that is because it's very hard for people to really accept and understand that these changes happen at a deeper place within us that's subatomic. This is the first time for a lot of people where this is going to now break through in your social experience with other people. Many of you born before 70s are already awake, so you're gonna finally master the higher level of this. If you're born after 75 and 80s, you're awakening this for the first time. Although 80s and 70s, you've awakened too. This is really for 90s babies. So this week, the moon's gonna go from Aries to Cancer. Why is that important? This is the final part of the gauntlet based on the first and second decan of Leo with this lion's gate where you charge up the body and your energy and the moon being 10th house to Leo completes this Leo cycle, taking the solar energy that's expanded into your body. First decan of Leo, the sun. Second decan of Leo, Jupiter. You store energy the first 10 days and then you evolve it the next 10, 10 days. And then third decan of Mars, you take action, baby. So I want you to see nine, 10, okay, the moon's gonna go over Uranus, and once Mercury squares Uranus, this is preparing for the King Kunks with the Sun and Neptune. So first, you're, you're, you're storing its energy with Mars, okay, you're activating this part of the, 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 the gauntlet, and you're going to slowly but surely build up an energy. Then this is grounding and manifesting in your body. 10th and 11th, you come into clear, literal, physiological manifestation and downloading. The changes will now come Gemini. And so what the significance is, is first you complete this cycle of energy you've gathered, it starts to actually glow through your body. And we need to look at the Uranian mechanism that's literally like turning on a phone. Okay, moon on Uranus, I press a button, that button I press produces an electronic response that blue, sun and Mercury and Leo. And so this is where that latent energy that Uranus has been stockpiling with the pressure of Leo, boof. Okay, then we move into Gemini and this is what now changes your mind to align you with where you truly belong. And this is the magic here, guys. It's literally the magic, like Gemini's magic, Pisces magic. So we have 20 degrees transforming 20 degrees. So we know that Pisces is the eighth house of Leo. And why is mutable signs eighth house to fix? Well, we know that fixed signs are eighth house to cardinal because cardinal is moving forward. So what can stop a, a cardinal? Fixed. See, I just eighth house to this cardinal action. Okay. Well, what about something that's changing, right? If something's happening, that's mutable. What's eighth house to mutable? cardinal so if something's happening and then i take a cardinal action and then i move it now it's happening here and i take a cardinal action and i move it now it's happening here that's a crazy example okay what's eighth house to fixed something is just fixed until i change it and now it's not fixed anymore right this was here and now i changed it and now it's there <laughs> that's the mutable side energy all right changing the fix and so this energy that you built up 10 degrees and then 20 degrees it's expanded now it's 20 degrees retrograde Neptune, and now this is transforming your entire perception around the metaphysical properties and experiences you weren't seeing before, and you're now beginning to perceive. It's not a coincidence that when this transformation happens, the moon is in Gemini to put your mind in check to be receptive to what's true, so you're not lost in la-la land, because when you go through transformations, it's kind of like going through laughing gas. It's like, it's not perfect yet. And so in the process of transformation, it's, it's kind of erratic. And this is where the moon in Gemini is going to take these changes happening and change your mind so that you can perceive what's happening. So you don't go fucking crazy. And then we go to the 12th, the, the, the 12th and the 13th, where now that Mars is squaring, okay, Pluto, this transformation process is now directly triggered just in time for the 14th and the 15th. And this is the, the 15th is the most important day this week. 23 Mars, 23 Sun, 23 Pluto. This is the transformation mechanism. The moon will also be King Kunks, this Capricorn energy, so that your mental process of this transformation allows you to perceive what's actually happening with your body. So you can have an intellectual understanding of this. Meanwhile, this is 12th, 11th house, 
uh, to Leo. And so this North Node in Gemini aspect is going to align you with secret hidden truth about who you're meant to connect with, who and what you're destined to do, and then you're going to take that cardinal action when the moon goes into Cancer. And this balsamic phase is super important because now that you have around this period officially begun, and this is this is the thing, Aries sparked it, Taurus manifested it, Gemini had you experience it with your mind, Virgo is going to have you experience this physically. Cancer fueled the body, and now Leo is, boom, turning on your superpowers. You are turning on your superpowers this week. You are turning on your superpowers this week. Those of you in sealed states, have, this is the reason why you've been seeing synchronicities to guide you along this. And so the sun, King Kunti Neptune, is forever changing the relationship between the synchronicities you experience as something that happens to you versus now something you consciously, directly co-create and now use as an avenue to connect with higher celestial beings and other people. <clears throat> this is the turning point where we have Sun in the Deccan of Mars, trining Mars, and so it's definitive action being taken to transform the mechanism of how you do everything physically, collectively being experienced around the world, and everyone individually is manifesting it in their own unique way. If this ish isn't badass, I don't know what else is! And so reflections to take on this. Nothing will ever be the same this life. Mars squaring the planet of death means that there are going to be certain actions you will never, ever, 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 ever do again. For example, by the time I'm recording this, I'm not really going to be smoking as recreationally as I smoke. And, you know, thankfully, I have accountability to be held to. And it's not really a problem. This is just really a decision. I'm also not going to be fapping the fappy fap. And I'm going to be retaining my semeny semen. And so these are actions that I'm no longer going to do, which create what? New actions. And these new actions are going to change my physiology. It doesn't have to be that extreme. I'm talking about activating superpowers, but you don't have, not all of you are going to levitate. Not all of you are going to shoot laser beams from your eyes, but some of you are going to overcome addictions. Some of you are going to finally be able to regulate your sleep schedule. Some of you are finally going to be able to have the courage and confidence to talk to people you wanted to talk to. If you don't see that as a superpower, then you have a lot to learn. You have to look at the little things because that's what's going to build up to the huge supernatural experience that will constitute the new direction of your focus of your life. The moon in Cancer in a balsamic phase is going to have you release the old character that was not aware of the supernatural potential of your nature. And when the moon in Gemini reveals the truth of who and what you're meant to do, moon in Venus is going to allow you the opportunity to forever change the relationship dynamics with certain people. Saturday, you need to test your courage. If there's anyone while the moon is in Venus that you love and that your heart is telling you that you connect with, connect with them. Doesn't matter if that's embarrassing to you, doesn't matter if that's nervous to you or nerve wracking, grow a pair and let whoever you love know you love them. Because the square to Chiron is gonna make this vulnerable but it's going to break you through accordingly. And if you show that courage and you, you get a little extra sexy with it, whoo, you're going to thank yourself. And that person will thank you too. So let's not forget that despite all the BS that's literally being maintained to you so that you're lied to about this genetic advancement of your potential, you are amazing. You are a boss. You are the literal shit. You shouldn't get flushed, but no one can touch you. You're so immutable that people have to lie to you because they can't really mess with the essence of your soul. So they have to lie about who you are so you don't really take serious your potential and you get told stuff that doesn't apply to you. If people knew that they have the ability to heal themselves, if people knew that they have the ability to miraculously heal themselves, then would you really need a lot of the medical solutions you're being brought or offered, okay? And so I can say people can heal themselves and people will be like, then how come people aren't healing themselves? Easy. There are no curriculum teaching people how to do this. You're not reinforcing their ability with avenues to help grow this. You're actively suppressing it. You're actively lying, telling people they can't do this. Other people who heal, you're killing holistic doctors and you're shaming real energetic practitioners. This is how and why everyone's not doing it. And so I really want you to take this week to really look 
at who is at least alluding to this. Not everyone has to talk about superpowers. When someone is talking about your freedom and maintaining your rights, they're talking about your superpowers. So who this week is guiding you towards your genetic evolution and who is just feeding you bullshit in the name of pseudoscientific rhetoric and politics? Should you take this message, find that out. And y'all stay blessed as always. This week is going to be one for the books. And this is all about the individual exploration of newly attained abilities. And this is, see, the abilities and techniques come Virgo season. This is all about the energy core and the energy source reawakening within you and getting ready to transform your entire life. Y'all stay blessed as always. And until next time, peace.